And it was really interesting because lots of people are saying, I prophesy that 45 will be back in, in 2022. There's not one video that says that. I had a time travel and I saw a gentleman and he said, not me said, but I'll tell you what I did prophesy because God did tell me more than once. I will restore my servant. I did say that. And I'm standing by that. And that will happen. As long as Donald Trump says, I'm going to do it, Lord, that's going to happen. That's going to happen. I'm going to say this again. That will happen. I will tell you what I prophesied under the anointing of God and what I never prophesied that people are saying. Never prophesied that. Never prophesied. They said, you said that on Elijah's dream that you prophesied. Oh, my gosh. That Trump will be back in 2022. Not there. I did not. And we will go back into that time. And you will hear it with your own eyes. What I said and what I didn't say. And why it's really sad that so many of the Christians are taking a word and twisting and saying a prophecy when I never said that. Now, I will tell you the prophecies. And I will tell you what I did say and what I didn't say. And let me tell you something. I am a man of integrity. My wife and my staff knows that. If I said something and it wasn't right, I'm going to say right here and then I will apologize. I said, that was not correct. I didn't say that right. I didn't interpret it right. I will say that. I have no problem with that. I'm not here to hide anything. Okay. Uh, you sh there's not one perfect prophet. There's not one perfect pastor. There's not one perfect child of God. We're only perfect in Christ. Okay. So you can miss it. You can make mistakes. You can do all that. That happens. We learn and we're growing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, but if I said anything, if I said it, I'm going to review those videos. I'm going to review it myself to see. And if I said it and I, and I said, okay, well, that's wrong. I need to, I need to come out. I need to, to confess it because I'm a man of integrity. I fear the Lord. I fear the Lord. I'm telling you, I fear the Lord. I'm not going to do anything, you know, it's not going to do that. I, I love the Lord and I love the saints and I thank God for that. Now, before I'm going to go in, we're going to go back and we're going to see this video again on Elijah stream and we're going to see it. It's a, it's a, it's a clip and so you can hear it yourselves and you can share it. You go, wow. Pastor Manny didn't say that. He didn't prophesy and say, I prophesy Donald Trump will be back. He you will see it with your own eyes and you'll see how many people have failed. They have ran. And because there are so many prophecies out there, we can get it all screwed up and mixed up. Okay. But I love them. God bless them. I love them. Woo. Glory to God. And there are so many prophecies that the Lord had me to speak. This year, that was prophesied, that has come to pass with we, we, literally, literally. And I'm thanking God because the best is yet to come. Woo! The best is yet to come. And sometimes people get my name mixed up with somebody else's. They'll say, somebody else may have said, there have been prophets that have said something about this year. And I'm not denying that because anything is possible with God, Okay. I'm just saying, I want to clear it up about what I said and what I didn't because I love, I love the Lord's people and I see there is confusion. And God is not the author of confusion, saints. Hey folks, welcome to The Wall Transfer with TC. Today, I'm going to be going over Manuel Johnson's time travel vision, whatever you want to call it, uh, concerning uh, 2022. He claims that he was taken uh, into the future by God and that he saw DJT in office in 2022. So we're going to go over that. And we're also going to examine Manuel Johnson's Twitter prophecy. So what you just saw was a, a live stream that he did on December the 6th. And so he was saying that he did not prophesy the return of Trump. Now, for me, it's kind of odd that this would be done right before 2022. Um, he's did many different interviews. And people have referred to it as a prophecy, and he never rebuttaled them. So now he is saying that uh, he never prophesied this. So we're going to go ahead and go over that. And we're going to go over his 2022 crypto prophecy 
as well. Now, one of the reasons why I'm doing this, folks, is because many of you, whether you're commenting on the YouTube or you're sending me emails or messages all about Manuel Johnson and his DJT 2022. And, you know, when I would talk about other different prophecies concerning events uh, relating to the presidency, your guys' rebuttal was Manuel Johnson. This is, that's one of the reasons why I am doing this. So, first of all, I just want to say that I'm not calling him a false prophet, right? Just like I do, I have not called Julie Green a false prophet, but she's got many prophecies wrong. Just more recently, you know, her Nancy Pelosi was going to die by the midterms. Herschel Walker was going to win. There was going to be this massive big red wave and the return of DJT in 2022. None of those things have taken place, and there's many more for 2022 that did not come to pass. So going into 2023 is going to be much different concerning prophecies and whether they are dreams or visions. I do hold prophets to a higher standard, right? He is saying that he's a prophet, okay? And according to Deuteronomy 18, 21 and 22, and if you say in your heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. That's why a lot of times when I talk about certain prophets and they're, and they're making all these different prophecies that aren't coming to pass, I'm not afraid because the Bible says that we don't have to. Then also in 1 John 4, the Bible calls us for us to what? Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. So this is what we're doing. We are testing the spirit. When it comes to, and I'm just speaking generally, I'm not saying any of these people are false prophets. What I'm saying is, is that when a wolf comes in sheep clothing, you are not going to know. Because they're going to sound like Christ, act like Christ, preach the word like Christ. Right? All their teachings are going to line up with mainstream Christianity. Okay, so you're not going to see it coming. And so this is the other reason, because I know that there are false prophets that have come in concerning the wealth transfer. And I, I've kept my mouth shut, but I'm speaking right now on some of the things that I am seeing and what's out there and what is the truth. Because there are people out there that are, have these massive platforms and they're getting prophecies wrong and they're claiming that they are from God. Okay, so we're going to test the spirits. One of the things that I realized, remember I asked the question, why doesn't God show all these prophets the details of the wealth transfer? Well, I'm getting that answer. For me, there's a lot of people out there that do videos on Manuel Johnson, Julie Green, and they're very strict and they have no tolerance when they are going over their prophecies as far as prophets being wrong sometimes. And I understand that. But we are under grace, and the prophet is part of the fivefold ministry. So I do expect apostles and pastors and teachers and evangelists sometimes to get it wrong, especially teachers, because the Bible itself, there's many different errors in translation. That's why you have to go to the concordance. If, you, if it was translated properly, you wouldn't have to go to the concordance. You wouldn't have to go to the Greek and the Hebrew uh, original word and meaning to get the full understanding of the scripture. Now, one of the things is when it comes to the Bible and the word concerning testing the prophets and these prophecies, people are twisting scripture when it comes to protecting the prophet that they like or covering up for them. And you're, you're doing the exact same thing as what people are accusing like the Pope or politicians who twist the Bible right, for their own benefit or political belief or whatever, right? You're doing the same thing because the Bible makes it clear to test the spirits. The Bible makes it clear that if the prophecy doesn't come to pass, you can't extend it. If they give a date, you can't extend that date. That doesn't make any sense. You are doing the same thing. You are twisting the scripture to fulfill your own personal desires and political beliefs, because many of these prophets are stroking your political ego. And Cape Collette said two presidents, right? And the only way that I see that right now is if there's some type of debate uh, that deals with the Supreme Court and some other things that are that are going to happen, where it's gonna it's gonna be like that, or that the former president 
is going to be uh, put in as the Speaker of the House. Now, Matt Gates talked about that a very long time ago. Right? I brought that up when he brought it up. I brought that up as far as uh, doing that. I do believe that we are in the Jeremiah 20 and 29 time period where God had removed DJT and allowed Babylon to come in. And there will be a time in the future, but not according to the prophets, because these prophets are trying to prophesy something that's going against God. If you read Jeremiah 28, 29, God spoke one thing, but the prophet Hananiah was trying to speak something else. And you saw what happened, right? He was stroking the political ego of those who could not believe that God would put Israel in bondage. So the purpose of this channel is to discuss wealth transfer prophecies. If I could show the good, I could talk about the bad. You know, that's the whole thing is, is this is what people want. They just want to show all the prophecies, all the good ones by all their favorite prophets. But then if they don't come to pass, they don't want to hear it. Then I get accused of picking on people and so forth. No, we're testing the spirits and I'm trying to show you something before we go into 2023 because I am not going in to 2023 the same way I went into 2022. And you guys know the very reasons because a lot of people were bamboozled by people giving dates and prophecies and making it seem like that they were from God. And that's the whole thing. These people are claiming these things are from God, right? And there's been a lot of people, you know what I'm talking about, that you've been You've been told that DJT was going to win. You've been told that uh, on inauguration day, that it was going to, by inauguration day, it was going to be changed and turned around on inauguration, that it was going to happen the rest of 2021 and all of 2022. And so if all these prophets are wrong about the return of DJT, you have to consider that maybe they're not hearing from God on all these other things. So what if they get a few prophecies right? I've got a lot of predictions right. That doesn't make me a prophet, right? There are people that have better prediction rates than people who have prophecy fulfilled. And from what I understand, almost every single prophecy concerning the wealth transfer, as far as a time period or a date, has failed. That tells me that people are not hearing from God concerning those things. And that's the truth. That's the word. That's the scripture. People want to bring up Jonah and all that stuff. That is a sorry excuse for time after time after time after time. That was a conditional prophecy on judgment. He said he went to go preach. Well, what does preach mean? All right, folks. So that's my little rant. This is not directed towards, you know, Manuel Johnson. But I want you guys to hear because this is important going into 2023. We are at the point to where the elections are not that far off. So again, on this channel, what I do, you know, I share all these different prophecies from prophets. I share dreams and visions. I know sometimes that when I share these, that more than likely they're not going to come to pass, especially if they have a date attached to it. At least there are people out there that when they are shown a date, they at least tell you like, hey, I'm just telling you what I saw. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to happen, but at least they give you a disclaimer. Now, please, folks, read Jeremiah chapter 28 and 29, where you have two prophets with conflicting prophecies. It's very, very important going forward into 2023. All right, so let's go ahead and get into Manuel Johnson's time travel vision or whatever you want to call it. Right. He said he didn't prophesy this. So let's go ahead and see exactly what he said. Yeah, God. Man, I feel an anointing here. I want you to receive this because I didn't ask for this, nor did I plan it. It was God's perfect will to allow me to usher me into the future. That's right. He has ushered me into the future. And I took notes. I wrote it down. And the things I saw, I want to explain it to you, saints. I mean, God is a good God. He, uh, this happened around six, seven weeks ago. Very powerful. Where the Lord had ushered me into the future. And I went through some kind of portal. Some kind of portal. And it was a real deal. And I knew I was in Southern California, which I live in California. 
So apparently God used California. And as I went into, went into this, uh, went through this portal, and I, I, I'm watching and I see a lot of movements. It was a beautiful day, a lot of movements. Nobody was wearing a mask. Glory to God. It was a thing of the past. The mask, the virus is going bye-bye. And I didn't know what it was. So I saw a gentleman pass by me. And as he was passing by me, I had asked him, I said, sir, what year is this? And he looked at me crazy. He thought I looked like, he, I, th I think he thought I was drunk. And I said, sir, please tell me what, what year is this? And he looked at me and he says, where have you been? I said, please tell me what year is this? He goes, man, it's 2022. Don't you know it's 2022? And I go, wow. And then he started to walk away. And I asked him again. I know I was prompted by the Holy Spirit to do this. I said, sir, who is the president? Who is the president? And he said, don't you know? I said, I don't. Please tell me, who is the president? And he told me, he said, it's Donald Trump. Donald Trump is our president. And saints, get ready. I don't care how it looks now, Donald Trump is our next president. He will get a second term. So the, may, the way it looks, it may look like that he's not winning. It may, may look like all this stuff, but God has plans for our president. He will be, and you will see him being inaugurated a second time, our president. And they're going to show that picture there on the screen. He will be inaugurated a second time. Donald Trump will be our president for a second term. Glory to God. There you go. Now, when you said second term, people, after you did that video, so that, that was like, how long ago did you do that video? I did the video did about, let's see, maybe four or five months ago. Okay, so after the four or five months ago, people started saying, when it looked bad, that all oh, this, God must mean he'll get out of office and then he'll come back in in 2024. That's what people begin to surmise. But this, this, you were not in 2024. That's right. That was in 2022. So God had, in his perfect divine will, he had planned this. You see, and saints, I'm going to say this again. I wasn't praying or fasting or trying to move into the spirit realm. I know it, it, the Lord took me out and I, I know something was happening because I, I just wasn't me. Everything was different. I'm excited about what the Lord is going to do. That disease or this disease that people call COVID-19 is going bye-bye. It is going by by. We, I, you know, I knew I was in California. Uh, I knew I wasn't, I knew it wasn't 2020. That I knew. So, and so the Lord had allowed me to, to usher me into the future and just jump in passing by me. It was God's perfect timing because he wanted me. And it, it wasn't, God was prompting me through the spirit of God. He was prompting me to ask those questions. And so, because he knew that this day would come. Saints, this is wonderful. And I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm saying it right now live. Donald Trump will hold a second term, not 2024. That's interesting. That's really good. Go ahead. Uh, I, want well, to, I, want to, I want to let you understand. Um, Steve knows about this earlier. He, okay, so you heard he said that what God did with him was God's perfect will that ushered him into the future in 2022. And he also said it as out of his own words that it will not be 2024. So many people took this and ran with it. Now, if you guys remember in the beginning of the video, he said that he didn't prophesy that. So even though he went on all these different shows uh, with all these different people talking about this vision, talking about the return of DJT and so forth, going on Bo Ponies, sitting there with Julie Green, and uh, on Elijah Clips, and just going over all these different, uh, just going on all these different shows, talking about uh, this prophecy. So the way that I look at this, folks, I'm, you, when you test the spirit, when you look at what he was saying, and of course there's two days left, in 2022 so i have to question myself where did he get this vision from 
Because obviously, if God was showing him 2022, by the time you guys hear this video, there's only going to be a day left. So where is he getting his information from? Where is he getting his visions from? His time travel, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And do you think God is going to tell everybody that follows him in the Christian community that there's going to be restoration in 2022? Right. He talked about the whole thing with the masks and all that stuff. Well, guess what? All that stuff is still going on in the virus. So, again, this is what I say. And this is why when people send me this stuff and, you know, I've already seen a lot of failed prophecies coming from a lot of these different people, including Manuel Johnson. And so that's why I never really talked about him or discussed him because I don't have any faith in what he says. That's just me. And we're not talking about predictions. He's saying that he was taken into the future from God. So he put God into this vision. So where did he get this vision from? What, what was the source of this vision? Now let's go ahead and examine Manuel Johnson's Twitter prophecy. Now, one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because when the whole rumors were coming out about Twitter and Elon Musk uh, back in March, and then in April, it got more serious. Then all of a sudden, all these prophets want to prophesy about Twitter. Okay, and but there were other prophecies concerning that. And so I was also, too, looking for prophecies uh, concerning, was there anybody out there that said that Elon Musk was going to buy Twitter, right, before any of the rumors? And I found absolutely zero. All these prophecies didn't come out until after Elon Musk was considering buying Twitter. And so right there, um, to me, when, when there was this flood of prophecies concerning Twitter, there was a lot of red flags, if you understand what I mean. So this video came out on May the 3rd, right? This is uh, well over a month before uh, the rumors that Elon was going to buy Twitter. So we'll just take a listen and then we'll keep moving on to the next videos. There's wealth transfers happening right now as I speak. I spoke on a few broadcasts that I believe, I felt in my spirit, that Elon was going to buy Twitter and it happened. Then let me tell you what's going to happen with Twitter. Right now, Twitter is going to go to a refreshing, a revamping. That's what I want to say. So you're going to see, this is, I actually saw this. I saw it in the spirit. The stock market is going to do like that with Twitter. But eventually, Twitter is going to rise. I don't know how, how much it's going to rise, but it's going to rise. Okay? So, so give it time to settle. But it's going to rise. God's going to anoint Twitter. And so so watch. You see the glory of God. You're going to see the glory of God. Okay, so there was a few things that he said there. That he had said a few videos back, right? As far as he said that he felt like Elon was going to buy Twitter. Right? Then I came across this other video uh, from April the 20th. All right, so I want you guys to listen to this. Uh, because this is where uh, these prophecies are coming from. So going back through, um, I found this on April the 20th. I didn't find any other before as far as a mention of Twitter except for except for this video where this lady here mentions Twitter about a big transformation coming. So we'll go ahead and listen to this prophecy right now. Keep in mind, folks, when I do a search... From January 1st to March 31st about Elon Musk buying Twitter so forth you can see the different uh, the different tweets he was talking about is a new platform needed because he was complaining about Twitter right and all the things that needed to be done with it right Elon Musk he's thinking about building his own Twitter and so forth right go to the news section right this is all before April the 1st uh, buy Twitter was trending in March okay so he was already thinking about buying Twitter at that point in time. So I wanted to make that clear. I didn't search Reddit or anything like that just to even see if there was anything even sooner than that. If I have to, I will. Just It's just so I can prove a point. But pretty much it was already being in, in talks, right? Elon Musk surveys freedom of expression on Twitter, right? So a lot of that was already being discussed well before... Uh, April 
And I think that's very important. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and play this prophecy uh, concerning Twitter on April the 20th of 2022. So we're going to examine this thing. Do not, I'm telling you, saints, it is a receiving broadcast right now. You need to receive this. And God is giving witty ideas, situations around the world to his children. He's, I mean, things are opening up. I spoke about Twitter. I'm going to say this again. I spoke about Twitter. That what God's going to be doing with some of the medias on Elijah Street. I didn't give the exact name, but God said God will start dealing with the media platform. I spoke about Twitter. I'm going to say this again. I spoke about Twitter. That what God's going to be doing with some of the medias on Elijah Street. I didn't give the exact name, but God said God will start dealing with the media platform. Now, I actually had to play that twice. So he said on Elijah's stream that he talked about Twitter. He said Twitter twice. But then he backtracked and said he didn't give the exact name. And then said God said he was going to deal with a media platform. Now, once again, there's many different media platforms. There's thousands of media platforms. Twitter is a social media platform. So to me, that is very, very strange and very telling. And Twitter, Twitter is a media platform. Twitter is a social media platform. There are plenty of media platforms. You could have been talking about anything as far as uh, ABC, NBC, Fox News. I mean, when you look at media itself, that can that can entail so many different things. So saying that God is going to deal with it, yeah, that's fine. We know that Kim Clement talked about that too as well, right? He said there would be Damascus Road experience with some of the news media. And he prophesied that years ago. You be prayerfully on this one. Prayerfully. I am not telling you to do it. I can tell you what the Lord showed me, but I'm not telling you to do it. But I said, listen. A lot of people are going to get, they're going to be millionaires over Twitter. Watch and see. Millionaires over Twitter. They will be millionaires overnight because they invested in Twitter. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm telling you what the Lord showed me. He said what the Lord said, right? Millionaires over Twitter overnight. What happened here? Questions and answers, because people have been asking our ministry. So that's why I'm addressing it right now. Okay. Elon Musk, Musk, I believe Musk, is highly, highly considering to buy Twitter. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, the Twitter stock has dropped consistently. That's a door. That's a door. Whatever happens, it is a win-win. Whatever happens, it's a win-win. So you pray about that. I know what me and my household are going to do. We're going to follow the leading of the Spirit. But I'm going to tell you something. This part I know, because I saw it in the vision. Many people will be millionaires overnight because of Twitter. There's a window of opportunity right now. You pray for whatever God tells you to do. So God will give you secrets. Now, what did he say? He will also show us treasures in the darkness. The wealth of the wicked to be transferred, what? To the righteous. What is Twitter representing right now? So look, if God allows me to plug into something like that, and overnight become millionaires. That's the wealth of the wicked being transferred. The wealth of the wicked. Understand. So God can say, I can give you, I can give you, I can bless you this way, or I can bless you that way. However God wants to increase you, don't resist it. 
All right, folks, so you heard it from his mouth as far as Twitter, overnight millionaires, right? He's, and he said what he was going to do and so forth. And he was talking about how the price had dropped considerably. Uh, this was on April the 20th of 2022. Now, we go to look at the history of the price. The lowest they got, I believe, was $31 within the last year. And as far as on April the 20th, the stock price was 46. The day after that was 45. I believe the lowest it got was $32.76. And as it got closer to that date, uh, it did go up. So what happened to those shares? Uh, it was $54.20 per share. So um, there was no millionaires being made uh, over Twitter. And there was no millionaires being made overnight. Now, it's possible that if you were swing trading it, yes, but the majority of people in the wealth transfer do not swing trade. So even if you bought this at its lowest at $32.76, you didn't even double your money. So if you put in a thousand bucks, you didn't even double your money. Now, back on October the 28th, uh, he said urgent stock Twitter prophecy being fulfilled. So let's go ahead and take a listen and see what he says concerning uh, this urgent stock Twitter prophecy being fulfilled because you would have had to put in a lot of money to make a lot of money or the price would have had to skyrocket in order for you to become a millionaire overnight. If you were buying it at 40 or even at 32, 45, whatever the case, it would have to 10 X plus in order for you to reach a million dollars and at that you would have had to spend a lot of money in the first place five months ago several months ago i gave a prophecy regarding twitter now i want you to understand the way prophecy works whenever there's a prophecy spoken in an atmosphere you have to understand there is a second heaven a demonic ram that likes to make it look like that prophecy is going to fall and fail. We read this in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, about the principalities that are in the certain parts of the heaven. Not God's heaven, not God's throne. There is a realm where demonic forces like to stop the word of God or hinder it. Right after I gave that prophecy, Elon put a hold on buying Twitter because there were some legal issues. Now, I'm not in charge of that. I'm only going to say what God spoke to me. And then all of a sudden, that prophecy dropped. I mean, not the prophecy. The stocks dropped. That was perfect time. It dropped all the way to like $42, $41. Wait a minute. But there was a prophecy this thing was going to go up. Yes. See, God will allow the enemy to come in to position you and I. Woo! Remember, the devil's plots are God's divine plans. Whenever the devil has a plot, God has a divine plan. So, saints, if you will, if you have, take the time. Google the record of Twitter stocks five months ago and watch. I was here, then it dropped right after the prophecy. And I said, saints, if God is leading you, this is a good time to get it. So let's take a look, right? So let's even going back to when he first was talking about it, $46.34 was the low, right? And I don't see the stock dropping at all. It actually went up. It didn't drop until, until the 13th. Right, went down to 40 bucks, and the cheapest that it got was $32.76, which was all the way in July. And so you would have had to purchase on that day to get the lowest deal. Everybody else was buying it up well after then. Okay, so eventually, yeah, it did drop, but it did go back up too as well. So you would have had to wait until July the 12th to purchase that. So he made the prophecy in April. Then you have May, June, and July. So 
even if it did drop, you you was talking about forty dollars or whatever. You're still we're only going to make fourteen dollars off of each stock. That is not a millionaire type of situation. Because I never stopped it. No, listen, nobody's perfect. Sometimes you can misinterpret something. But I also had prophesied. I saw in the spirit that it was going to have issues. Not to fear. God is going to do the job. It has happened. Woo! My God. All time high. All time high. I'm going to take you back several months ago when the prophecy was given. But those that did not know it, so those that did not know it, God is trying to bless you I am not a financial expert. I only give what God shows me. Okay, so it was October the 28th of 2022. And on November the 8th of 2022, the shares were purchased from you, if you had had some, at $54.20. Right, so the last day uh, it shows here uh, was the 27th, 27th of October. So when he was doing this video, basically Twitter was, basically that was it at that point. Ready? So I'm going to take you back and let's see what the prophecy. Saints, I want to tell you, this prophecy was given on, according to, it was given on 5-4-22, the year 2022. You can see that if you look up there. But this is, so let me finish so you can hear the rest of this. I spoke on a few broadcasts that I believe, I felt in my spirit, that Elon was going to buy Twitter and it happened. Then let me tell you what's going to happen with Twitter. Right now, Twitter is going to go to a refreshing, a revamping. That's what I want to say. So you're going to see, this is, I actually saw this. So I saw it in the spirit. The stock market is going to be like that with Twitter. But eventually... Twitter is going to rise. I don't know how how much it's going to rise, but it's going to rise. Okay, so so give it time to settle, but it's going to rise. God's going to anoint Twitter, and so so watch. You see the glory of God. God is going to anoint Twitter. So we're seeing it today. We saw it. It went through some trouble. Some situations going on but that doesn't stop the move of god would may be delayed but it was not delayed i'm going to tell you this what was delayed but was not delayed all right take a look at shares of twitter right now because you won't be able to check them for much longer reports say that the stock is going to be delisted ahead of the open tomorrow as elon musk's 44 billion dollar deal to acquire the social media giant is on track to close tomorrow, meeting the court-mandated deadline, but it may not be gone for too long. There's a separate report out there saying that Musk is looking to bring Twitter back to the public market in three to five years. And you see that one month chart, the stock has jumped pretty significantly up 27% today, trading at 53.82 a share. Look at that, Saints. Look at that. So this is the Lord. There are been there were people that followed that prophecy and they were and they are being they are celebrating right now. There are people that follow the prophecy, that prophecy, and they are celebrating. I mean really being celebrated. I believe houses are being paid off right now. Uh, mortgages are no mortgages are being taken care of. Uh, uh, other debts are being taken care of because you would have had to put in a lot of money in order to make a lot of money off of this stock. This is not a situation where people were becoming millionaires because the stock was at a dollar or two dollars, right? The stock didn't even double. So if you were going to be a, if you're going to be a millionaire, you would have had to put in at least six hundred thousand dollars at the lowest price. In order to become a millionaire. Because they followed, they listened in the Lord and they, it was, 
Saints, you need to be next. You need to be next. Hey, okay, folks. So this is a situation where you be the judge. I have presented the information, and this is why I say, uh, especially with a lot of these people I, I don't follow, and I'm not calling him a false prophet. Um, I'm just, I just don't think he was hearing from God on this situation. And this was a situation that did not come to pass. Now, people say, well, he's going to bring back Twitter, you know, three to five years from now. Okay, so how much do you think it's going to be, right? He wasn't talking about three to five years from now, right? Nobody expected him to take it private. That that was the kicker. And that's why I'm glad that Elon didn't make that known right away. Also, I want to point some things out. Uh, even Robin Cunningham had a prophecy from April the 27th, uh, Twitter was $100. Now, you guys listen, you be the judge. Now, this came out uh, about seven days after Manuel Johnson had his prophecy about uh, millionaires overnight concerning Twitter. And this was before Elon Musk said he was going to take it private. A couple days ago, I had said, when Elon takes over Twitter, you're going to see the stock of Twitter drop. It's already dropped like two from fifty one dollars to like forty something dollars, you know. And but the Lord also had said to tell you that it was going to rebound and it was going to be worth more than it was when Elon took it over. And it was worth at the time he took over, I want to say it was like fifty to fifty one dollars a share. So <clears throat> pay attention to that. If that's something you're interested in, it's going to be. I feel like the Lord's saying the stock of that is actually going to go over a hundred dollars a stock. Which is or a hundred dollars a share, which is something crazy, right? <clears throat> but it would literally be double. I mean, that's a, that's like a big deal. It's cheap right now, but it's a it's a big deal in the future, um, especially when it's tied to SpaceX and Doge and the the different things that he's going to start doing with the platform. So, looking at the price since that particular prophecy. Uh, I believe that the highest that it actually got was $53.70. So I don't see anything since then uh, over $100 or anything like that. So you guys be the judge. You guys tell me what you think. Um, I'm just sharing this information because I just think that it's, you know, something's off about this whole thing with Twitter in general speaking because on some of the comments that people were even saying. Prophecy given by Julie Green that Facebook is basically going down and so is Twitter, right? Uh, Julie Green said Twitter stocks would come to nothing. And this person said here, today for 22-22, saints, please seek the Lord for yourself about investing in Twitter stock. The simple math is this. The, t the stock price today closed at 48.93. If the stock price were to increase 10 times to 490, a person would have to buy over $110,000 worth of Twitter stock to make $1 million. And for it to increase 10 times overnight, as Manuel says. If the stock was rising that quickly, trading would be halted. Being an investor in the stock market, with all due respect, when Manuel says whatever happens to the stock is a win-win, completely incorrect and ne negligent. If the, he's right about that. Even if you even if you were to buy it at its cheapest, you would still have to buy a, a an astronomical amount of Twitter stocks in order for that to happen. So you guys be the judge of that, man. I'm just, I'm just sharing that information and just sharing some of my thoughts with this, you know, and questioning, right? And if, if, if people say, well, you can't question the prophets and all this stuff, the Bible makes it clear that we test the spirits. Okay, we're testing the prophecy. And if a prophecy doesn't come to pass, then it was not from God, right? So that's the way that I look at it. So when you hear these prophecies, folks, do your research. Now, folks, I'm getting ready to share something else he said about food shortages. Okay. Now, if you guys remember, those are things that I've talked about. Um, there's plenty of people. I have this document uh, that details all these different people uh, going back several years about food shortages coming to the United States and all around the world. It's one of the reasons why we put together our storehouse. That's why I told you folks, this could be very important who you listen to going into 2023. And that's all that I've tried to do is to share different people, share different perspectives, 
analyze, test, whatever the case, I've learned a lot of hard lessons in 2022. But those lessons is going to make for a better and brighter 2023. And in this video, he's talking about he inquired of the Lord. So let's go ahead and take a listen. What about coming food shortages? Let me tell you something, saints. I did not see that. I know this. I've been. I actually inquired of that, and the Lord has assured me right now. I'm not saying something could change, but this has happened before, and I've told our congregation the Lord never told me to stock up on anything. Now I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm just saying the Lord says uh, a lot of things you're seeing will will not even take place, and so I haven't stocked up on food. I mean, I have food, but I haven't stocked up on food because every time I thought I should do it, the Holy Spirit says, what are you doing? And I go, well, I'm stocking up on food. And the Lord says, did I tell you to do it? I said, no, Lord. I says, all right. And then I tell my wife, I said, God told me not to do it. And guess what? It ends up, it didn't happen. It was no issue with the food shortage. Now, if it changes, I will definitely tell you. But I haven't heard anything for, for us to do that. And so I haven't done it. All right. So you heard what he said. Now, of course, there is the perception that there's not going to be a food shortage here in the United States, right? But yet, we have all these different uh, people making these different prophecies concerning a lot of the things that are going to come, right? It may not come right now, but there have been a lot of food shortages over the last several years. I was telling you guys about it because it was happening at the store that I worked at, right? And prices were outrageous. One of the reasons why you build your storehouse is because you buy things at a cheaper price right now everything is double triple quadruple the price so when you go to buy two or three turkeys to store up look how much more expensive it is when you go to buy chicken look how much more expensive it is so it's not just about a food shortage but look at the cost food is costing everybody a whole lot of money so when things do get really bad and that time is going to come famines are going to come and that's why you build your storehouse so that you can be prepared and many people don't even know uh, like turkeys uh, a lot of the turkeys that you buy in the store that are frozen have been frozen for several years right so they've actually stayed ahead of the game but now you see the price of turkeys have gone up it was a very expensive thanksgiving for many people who spent double what they normally would have spent. And so that's why I say it's going to be very important that you test the spirits and that you follow people who are accurate, at least more accurate. And so that's why I'm not following him or even the crew that he hangs around, right? Because they've been wrong too on a lot of different things. So anyways, folks, I just wanted to present this to you. And I'm not trying to say he's a false prophet. I'm just simply saying that where is he getting his information from? It says, test the spirits. What spirit is he? He's seeing these visions and they're not happening, right? They're not being fulfilled, you know? And these people are saying that God showed them. God took me to the future. God told me. So if you guys do want this document of the inflation, economy, food shortages, and you want to go through all these different prophecies and test the spirits very well, go ahead and do so. But you have one person versus what God is showing all these people, right? Individuals, people who don't have big YouTubes or big ministries, right? So anyways, folks, that is all that I have for today. I thank you guys for listening. God bless. TC out.